around distributing, we balling. We got the crawfish boiler fired up, and uh, we throwing a little goodness in there. Now that it's balling, we're going to throw a couple of curveballs at y'all. Pineapple. If you hadn't had it in your crawfish boil, you're missing out. So we're going to throw all of our pineapple in there, y'all. If you ain't ever had cabbage, Brussels sprouts, mushrooms, we're doing crawfish and ribs tonight, y'all. We're doing our cabbage. Now, I don't know about y'all, but where I come from, sausage is called, uh, if you buy it at the store, it's called Koneka. You like Koneka sausage? I love it, some Koneka sausage. Hey, what's it, up, buddy? How we doing? Man, this is some Koneka black pepper sausage. Woo! I and, know you cut off some pineapple in there, didn't you? Man, there's already there's three cans and a whole fresh one. That's on the to-do list every time we do crawfish and shrimp from now on. So, we had a rolling bowl. Yep. We washed these crawfish a little bit ago. My, my son Weston was here. Yep. And we washed these bugs. And, man, these are some nice Ooh, look ones. Look at that. We got some beautiful bugs. Um, Zach brought these from Evans, Evans Meats. We got a rolling bowl. We put a bunch of swamp fire in here, some lemons. Um, we put some fresh garlic. We dropped pineapple in a can. Yeah. We dropped our cabbage. We so dropped. We got, so we just poked holes in the pineapple cans. Took a chisel, poked holes in the end of pineapple cans. Threw it off in here. Otherwise, when you dump this, you're gonna be fishing pineapple bits out of it. Uh huh. So that contains them all. We yeah. said we are just going and dump these, brother. All right. And there you have it. Go for a swim. All right, boys. Get red. Get happy. Hey. Why are we letting them boil a little bit? I think we got some ribs ready. We got ribs. We cooked some ribs in the in the Gateway Drum a while ago, and folks showed up. They were on there two hours and 40 minutes at 300 degrees. Yeah. And did you see the color? Yeah, beautiful. With nothing. Tell them what we put on them. Salt, pepper, garlic. Salt, pepper, garlic. It's old school, Jack. Had a pretty cherry color on there. Everybody said, like, what'd you put on there? I'm like, salt, pepper, garlic. That's it. And it's hard to believe that that red color that came out of salt, pepper, garlic, but just nothing but one chunk of applewood for the smoke. Yeah. It turned, they turned out phenomenal. We ate one slab between all of us just snacking because it was crispy and juicy and yummy and it had a great smoke flavor, but all you had was just that enhanced flavor of the pork. It was a compart baby back rib. We yeah. hung four of them in there and I'm telling you the flavor that gateway did its job. It's old school at its best. That's right. That's right. Now, these bugs, y'all, we're going to let them go for a few minutes. We want our temperature to come up. Look at there. Look at that pineapple can. Look at there. <laughs> you can smell it a little bit. You can smell that sweetness of that pineapple. So we're going to let this roll in here. We want it kind of to boil for, you know, we want a good... We want it to get back to a bowl, really. Yeah. And once we do, that's really all we're looking for. Get it back to a bowl. And we're going to make sure we get our propane all the way up. We made sure we had it at a good rolling bowl before we dropped them. And then we want to bring it back to a rolling bowl. And then at that point, we're going to shock it. That's right. And uh, once we shock it, we're going to throw in some more seasoning. And we're going to throw in some ice to drop the temperature. And then we're going to go eat some ribs. All right. What do you think? That sounds like a good idea for me, buddy. So, hey, y'all. We cooked four slabs of ribs. We did. We ate one of them with salt, pepper, garlic. We just, what we did, what we did with that is, is we just pocket knifed those ribs. We pulled like out. We just pulled out the pocket knife and cut them up. And then uh, we took and we put some Red Net Barbecue Labs sauce. Man. We drizzled that on there and we hit one of them with apple chipotle. From Sweet Swan of Mine, and one of them with some Big D's Hurricane Rib Rub. Hey, and by the way, our Big D's Hurricane Rib Rub is our product of the week. Absolutely. You'll see that on the ticker below. 
Make sure to mention that you saw it on Old School with Mark and Ashley, and you'll get 15% off of Big D's Hurricane Rib Rub this week. Now that cabbage right there is going to soak up some yum -y, That's going to be fine. Spicy. And don't take a piece of that cabbage and wrap it around some of that Koneka sausage. Come on, please. Come on, man. Shoot. Shoot. So as soon as um, this almost comes back to a boil, one of y'all um, cut the propane and drop in the ice. Cut the propane, drop in the rest of the seasoning, give it a stir, and then drop the ice. Okay. We're using uh, a little swamp fire. You can use whatever you like, but um, Dusty Wally brought us this, and if it's Dusty Wally approved, it's, it's a old school approved. We're gonna go over here and pull some of these ribs out while these are coming back, and then we'll, uh, whoo, they already looking good, y'all. Look at that. Tell me something. Look at them. Woo -hoo -hoo. That's some live action right there, Mark. That's some live action, Jack. All right. All right. Well, we're going to switch cameras back to the back to the studio man so this week mark i don't know if you saw it but on our on our old school with mark and ashley page i put out a little poll thought it might be fun i got a big hat collection okay how many hats oh man Just, is it like joe martinez and boots maybe so <laughs> <laughs> or at least white t-shirts um but i put out a little poll this week of um a b and c three hats and we did a little voting poll on uh, Facebook and, and Instagram. And we'll do this every week. Just something fun. You pick my hat. My wife picks my clothes. So you pick my hat. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I got to figure out how to get my wife on board with that picking my clothes. No, she doesn't. Oh, come on, talking. man. Just you had me all worked <laughs> up. No, no. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Uh, just like when we're going out somewhere, you know, she might pick my clothes then. But our good friend, I don't know, I hadn't taken off my hat on camera yet. But my good <laughs> friends at Sweets, I mean, uh, at Boar's Night Out. There you go, you got it out. I was trying to say Sweets. Took a while, mine, but you got yeah. it. Boar's Night Out with White Lightning. <laughs> they gave me this hat, and it won. And so Jenna May said, those are some big crawl fish. They're some big said. crawl fish. Uh, but Boar's Night Out, uh, White lightning hat. Oh, it's one starting to bubble. We sure appreciate everybody. It's starting to bubble. Me. And I'm going to tell you, as a special gift, Woo! as a special gift, I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to do a, uh, a trivia question at the end. Man. And I'm going to give away it some smell good. That white pineapple lightning really tonight. comes through in the So, y'all make sure to watch at the end, closer to the end. I'm going to give away some spicy white lightning tonight. I appreciate my you smell friends that? from, uh, sweet, sweet. From Boar's yeah. Night Out and White Lightning, y'all. Um, How much longer before you think we need to shock them? Jana Mays, I want to thank you also for using that red box, using a, uh, a video of ours to make you some biscuits in that red box. So glad well, they you, starting to boil. you know, learned something but from it's us a, light a little bubble. bit. You said they were the best biscuits you ever had. Y'all don't know, check out Jana Mays, uh, Flapping in the Breeze Barbecue. Uh, check her out on Instagram and Facebook, all that kind of good stuff. She has a um, puts out some great looking food. I'll leave that one up good. Joe Wilson says, Boys, best filming and sound yet. Had turned up a little bit more, Mr. Wilson. We're trying, Jenna. I love We're that red box now. too. I think everybody ought to have it all at least over. One. So, uh, everybody needs to get them a red box from uh, Mark Lambert, Sweet Swine of Mine. Let's see what it looks like. You'll learn so many things on how, what to cook on it and all that kind of good stuff. As you see right. in the bowl camera. I think it's boiling, right? Burling. Is that a bowl? That's a bowl to That's me. A bowl to me. It's boiling now, yeah. Yep. 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a bowl. I don't know where you come from, where I come from. Water bubbling and boiling. 
Them crawfish ain't fighting or nothing. They're yeah. dropping in that extra it seed. We didn't hear him go. No. And somebody's calling Mark Lambert. That's Miss Bracey. <laughs> I might ought to take that one. You might ought to get that one off off mic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay. Well, we got our ice. We're gonna let go get us one more. Ice chill. is in. We're gonna let them chill down. You mean grab your mic from me? You need to call your wife. Yeah, let me call her real quick. All right. Where was it? Where was it at? Right over there. All right. We're still live. We're gonna switch out. Here's the camera. We're gonna talk about. She said. What she say? She said, "Quit talking outside while Ashley's talking inside." Oh, okay. She was just she was just giving us some show advice. I don't think you walked out there, and I don't think I was just talking, and I don't think you even knew that your mic was still on. Yeah, I kind of forgot. It's okay. Uh, right. We were cross contaminating the audio. That's right. <laughs> um. So let's see. Ryan Green says, "Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening to you, sir." All right, Big D's, Hurricane River. If y'all know who Big D is, Big D is Danny Montgomery. Some of and the finest folks you'll ever want to meet right there. I'm telling you, Danny Montgomery has been a friend for as long as I can remember in barbecue. He's one of the first guys that ever talked to me as a newbie in barbecue. Yeah. And I walked up, and I wanted to learn how to cook better barbecue. One common denominator back in the day you, you had in barbecue was the guys that were winning were cooking on backwood smokers. Yeah. And so we would go around and talk to all the guys that had backwood smokers and look at their trailers and talk to them about what they were doing. And uh, Danny was one of those guys that take you in and really talk to you. And Danny's a three-time world champion. He's we're, cooked all over the world. All over the world. And Danny's he's won at Memphis and May. Um, you know, he, he was actually uh, cooking with Chris Lilly last time they won grand champion. Really? In May. I didn't know that. And Danny cooked with with uh, me and Malcolm and Waylon uh, at the Hogs for a Cause in 2014 when we won Hogs for a Cause. Yeah. So uh, Danny is one accomplished cook and very he's probably, respected. He's probably forgotten more about barbecue than yeah. I know. He knows. And, and Danny's Hurricane Rib Rub is a really, I mean, you can use this for a sweet finish. It's got a really sweet finish. It has no heat, really. But it's got some beautiful color. It's got nice, sweet. Uh, and all of the elements of good barbecue from salty, sweet, smoky, and heat. Um, but just a touch, a little bit of spice, not too much. Just tiny bits of black pepper and stuff in there. But anyway, salt, pepper, garlic, rub in the gateway. Yeah. Two hours and 40 minutes, 245. Uh, new ribs are kind of crisp, tender, wasn't they? Yeah, they were. They juicy. were good on the end. Juicy. Uh, the bone had pulled back a little bit. I mean, it did its job. So... We we broke the first slab out and just cut them up. Doris, uh, we pocket knife. Doris, yeah. Doris and her husband were here. Yeah. Uh, and there was you know five or six of us here. Then we 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 went through that slab tasty. So the other two, um, we left one of them kind of just straight salt, pepper, garlic, and we hit it with, with our favorite house sauce. I mean, guys, if you had never had. Sauce, the Green Label North Carolina Sauce from Redneck Barbecue Labs. Best vinegar sauce I've Best vinegar ever. sauce hands down anywhere in the country from the birthplace of, of vinegar sauce. Yeah, North Carolina. So North Carolina. we took this slab, y'all, and all we did was sprinkle it with a little bit of sauce. And that's it. It didn't get any rub. So our, our salt, pepper, garlic was Texas Chrome from Joey Smith again. Yep. And, and look at the, look at this, look at that rib right there. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. And look here, you want to talk about tender? I mean, look at that. That beautiful color is nothing but smoke. I mean, it had the same color before we drizzled that sauce on there, and it, you know, it just kind of wet it down and gave it a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of that vinegar wang in there. Man, that smell good right out of the. So we're going to try it a couple. We tried it with nothing, y'all, and it was amazing with nothing. Now, these aren't fall off the bone. These stick to the bone. These are eating ribs. A good old eating rib. But 
I thought you was handing that to me. I is. <laughs> <laughs> you almost pulled it back because it hurt my feelings. So, salt, pepper, garlic, juicy. Oh, my God. And just a little sauce. Hold on. I'm going to need a minute. That's good. That's better than it was. That's fine. That's fine eating right there. Look. All that is, it had a little sauce drizzled over it. And we wrapped them up. What? 30 minutes ago? 30 minutes. And we put them in a camera to keep them hot. That's it. Dawson? Little John Dawson back here. Yep. Zach Norman? I, I just, mmm, goodness. So, at the end of the day, we had a bunch of folks in here that were just completely bumfounded. But we got that huh. kind of color. From nothing but smoke. Jim Hudgens said, y'all are so badass, I'm watching on my computer and my phone. I don't <laughs> want to miss a thing. So, that's my CTV right there. Look, you don't get no more old school than salt, pepper, garlic on ribs and hanging them over coals. Man. And I'm telling you. That's the best way to eat ribs right there. You can do competition ribs all you, all you want. It ain't for me. Too much sauce. And look, this enhances the pork flavor without covering it up. Hey, just look at that. These two, look at color on that. Now I'm going to say. That's Danny's, wasn't it? I think that's Danny's. Look at the color. You can tell. All that sugar in that, that rum. Oh, my gosh. That dude right there. And you can see it's just Are you ready to go. Ribs? Tracy, Tracy and Deidre Smith said. Mark, are you turning your ribs in the gateway? We hung them for two hours and 45 minutes and didn't, it didn't touch, touch them. them. Now, right. you can tell this is a little crispy on this backside. That that little bone right there is kind of crispy. And these are a little crispy on the ends. Man. But I ain't I ain't hating that. I ain't mad at it. This one is our apple chipotle. Oh, you can smell that chipotle, too. No. Oh. Oh, my gosh. And it, we just drizzle a little sauce mm. just to wet them down. And then you can see it on it put a glaze right there on Danny Montgomery's hurricane. It put a glaze on that joke. So oh, look at that. You see that? Oh, I wish that was 3D now, TV. This is more Memphis style. You can see it's a dry rub. You see that? It's a dry rib. And the same deal though. I mean, look. They're they break just apart. As juicy. They're just as tender. At the end of the day. Greg Snyder said he said told you that years ago. <laughs> He did. did. He, did he tell he, you? Oh, that? yeah, yeah. All right. Try, try Big D's. Big D's. Big D's Hurricane. My cousin Charlie Bridges is watching from down Here you in. Go. Dawson, now this one's going to be a little more sweet. The Sharky Issaquina area. What's up, cuz? German? That one's going to be a little bit sweeter. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> tell me something. That's good. I mean, that's wow. a good rib right there. That's as good a dry rib as you don't ask for. That's right. I mean, that's it. Man, it, it added the sweetness. If you're one of them that likes dry rubs, dry ribs, but you want a little sweet, you can keep them dry and still have the sweet if you use Big D's Hurricane. I'm going to tell you, y'all going to get you some of this. This week, 15% off Big D's Hurricane Rib Rub. It's the product of the week. All you got to do is say, hey, I saw that on Old School with Mark and Ashley. Get 15% off. Well, ma'am, it's got the right balance of salt and sweet. That's good. Let's try this apple chipotle. Mm. I got to have a napkin, or otherwise I won't be able to touch the screen. My touchscreen computer over there won't be doing nothing but getting greasy. Let's we'll see what apple chipotle. This one's a little crispier than the others. Again, we didn't touch them. Didn't I mean didn't do anything. Oh Lord. Tell me about it. I'm liking that. Oh. Me too. Totally different. 
totally different. Not as sweet. Mm -mm. A little back heat. Like that. You gonna try that one? This one's overcooked the mite. Yeah. But it is a little bit. Still tasty. Yeah. Still tasty. Jana May says she did ribs in the red box the other day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. The red box is, is a rib machine. That's right. I think she did some spare ribs. And on the second rack underneath that, if I remember from her picture right, she might have had some baked beans in a in a uh, you know full pan mm -hmm. up under her ribs, kind of dripping into her into her baked beans there. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So we just proved that good ribs don't need anything but charcoal, a little piece of wood, a little bit of some kind of seasoned vinegar or something to splash on to wet them down. Yeah. And then a dust of, I mean, really, if you want to go old school, sweeter barbecue, hurricane, if you want to go jack things up a little spicier, a little smokier than this uh, apple chipotle. But at the end of the day, really all it needs is salt, pepper, garlic. Texas Chrome GPS is what we use around here. Yeah. All right. Jim said, what was the temp on the gateway? 300. 300. And it, when you dialed it in to 300, it stayed at 300. It did. I called Joe Machado and asked him, I was like, look. I'm cooking on the gateway. I'm new to it. I need to know how to set it up. And Joey tells me, stick a pinky in the intake, stick a pinky into the exhaust, fill it three quarters of the way up with charcoal, fill the basket three fourths of the way up, light one edge of it uh -huh. with a torch. Pinky width all the way around, 300. It's like clockwork. And it stayed there. And this then, was the initial burn on this gateway. It is, this is our, our, our signature sweet swan of mine a high temp mat gateway drum. Yeah. And beautiful drum, by the way. And it just put out some wonderful ribs. Yeah. But you know what? I ain't going to get full on ribs. Cause we got some of them crawl, crawl fish. Some of them crawl fish. <laughs> they crawl on their bellies. We got crawl fish to eat. Cause you can eat ribs anytime, but you can't eat no mud bug all the time. You, yeah. There ain't no season for ribs. That's right. Crawfish season is upon us. And I ain't had none this year. Have you had any this year? I've had them twice. My you buddy went to some kind of party or something. Yep, had ribs we had a birthday party and we had them. And then my buddy uh Brett Fondo, he cooked some up at the uh, Sons Grocery up here at 309, 302. Yeah. And I went up there and got some from them one day. And then also we had some if you look over here in this area of the camera. We had some char uh, grilled oysters that our friend Zach uh, did for us. Got some butter, garlic, parmesan. I mean, butter, parmesan, herbs, lots of garlic. And Wilson Shire. And Wilson Shire. I mean, my cousin just said, y'all eating up right. And I said, you yes. know this. You know this, man. Old school with Mark and Ashley. It always eats right. That's right. Hey, by the way, I, you were over there when I said this before, but I I, I keep mentioning Jenna Mays, but she just got her red box on Saturday, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. They're camping this week, and red box is a perfect camper a companion, but... She cooked our biscuit recipe from when we did it about two or three weeks ago. Yep. And I saw the pan, the cast iron skillet. She double buttered them. Mm. Yeah, you know it. Made I her gotta some look gravy. Back. I got to look back. Yeah, you got to check her out. So um, you can cook your biscuits. You can cook your ribs. You know, we won world champion ribs first place at the American Rule cooking on a red box. Are you serious? We won third place in ribs at Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo on a red box. Yeah. So, if you think it ain't a competition cooker, it might not be a brisket or a shoulder competition cooker. You ain't gonna put it all on there. Yeah. But it will cook each individual competition category as good as the big dogs. And if you bought four of them, it would still be cheaper <laughs> than one of the big size cookers, right? Yep. And yeah. you can lift it. And you can control all the heat, you know, per whatever you're cooking in that in that red box. A long time ago, I did a KCBS on two red boxes. I just wanted to see if I could do it. Now, yeah. did I win? No. I was 
you know, bottom third. Yeah. Uh, just wasn't my cook, wasn't my day. Um, you know, and, and I'm going to tell you that the food was subpar because I, had, I hadn't learned how to properly control everything in the red box yet. Yeah. This was years ago. Um, but now that we've, we've mastered fire, fire management, both hot and, I mean, both dry and wet, whether, yeah. whether you got the water pan or the heat diffuser, um, I'm confident I can go out with two red boxes and, and do well in case it gets. Uh, definitely BCA was just three categories. There was a, there was a bunch of red boxes here this weekend. No, no doubt, no doubt. People were cooking half chickens, and we had a half chicken category on Sunday, and there was a lot of red boxes being used. It's a half it. chicken machine. That's right. That's right. So how long much how long do you think before the bugs are ready? I mean, it ain't gonna be long. It ain't gonna be long. Y'all icing them down, and they got two batches of ice. I see some. I see some steam coming off of them. A little bit there. of steam. I mean, I'm ready to eat them. Well, if you tell me they're ready, I'm ready to eat them. We've been into ribs, and we talked I've about ribs. I've, I've eaten a bunch of oysters. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, if you guys had never heard of LeBlancs, Kim LeBlancs out of Gonzales, Louisiana, where a lot of our friends live, um, and Kim LeBlanc makes fish fry, shrimp and vegetable fry, Creole seasonings, barbecue rubs. One of my favorite Guns N' Roses barbecue rubs. Yeah. Um, all different types of spices and seasoning. Kim LeBlanc in Gonzales, Louisiana. We sell his line. This yellow can is commonly referred to in, in, in and around Baton Rouge as yellow can. Yellow can. Not Creole seasoning, but hey, man, you got some yellow can? You got some of that yellow can? That's what, that's what it goes by. And it's, you know, it's taken over Creole seasoning in my world. All the Tony Sashries and Slappy Mom have gone away and gone straight up yellow can. Yeah. Um, mini pot. All the guys that cook mini pot in Gonzales, where mini pot originated at Woo Woo's, the yellow can is a staple. That's what all those guys use. Really? So, wow. We little, had a little yellow can out on top of some of these char grill oysters to finish them off, and it was tight. Yeah, it was very good. But, uh, make, hey, the chat's open. I'm sitting here watching it. So, if y'all have any questions for us, uh, have something you want to see next week or in the coming weeks. Uh, please let us know. Uh, Joe Wilson said, this is the best y'all have ever looked and sounded. <laughs> so, our good friend Joe Wilson. Uh, the temp on the, yeah, we answered that question about the temp on the uh, red box, I mean on the gateway. What are, the, what are the crawfish looking like? Well, Water temps, you know, I'm going to say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 degrees, neighborhood of that. It might be 160 because I got those, you know, Nomex fingers. Yeah. I'm just wondering what temp it made it down to just for giggles. I'm going to call it 160 degrees. I just want to see what my fingers, how well calibrated my fingers are. No, I'm high. 150. That was my initial thought, and then I bumped it up because I know how many calluses are on my fingers. So we're at 150 Charlie degrees. It's LeBlanc's. And this is about red eye. I think it's soaked. LeBlanc's Creole season. Plenty of time. Charlie. We got one hanging over here that was cooling off. Mm. And it peeled out perfect. They're going to take on all kinds of seasoning, y'all. We're going to dump them into our cooler. You got Let it, Let me Charlie. spray it out a little bit, though. Let's see if we can figure this. We don't want to put our crawfish in a dirty cooler. This is the one that we uh, washed our crawfish in, y'all. All right, time to dump our bugs. Now, this is a uh, Cajun seafood boiler, y'all, from R&B Works. It's a, called a two-sack boiler. But the cool part about it is you'll see this is the lid. And when you flip the lid over, it's got a couple of diverters. And you'll see um, Zach and John when they flip this up. Yeah, go ahead. Um, hand me that paddle behind you. This is a 
Just, there you go. You gotta keep them toward the middle. Get a couple more, y'all. Got a few stragglers hanging on. All right. Hmm. Lost a couple. No big deal. Got a little bit of lime on them. I think he must be talking louder outside. And That's what that means. we're coming on over here. John, what do you think? If you'll grab that side, and then we'll come right over here, right here. That looks like Mr. Hodson. Oh, we got another world champion showing up. Darn, gone in. I hate it when that happens. No, not, no kidding. I love it when that happens. Eric Hodson just pulled up. What do you think about them apples? Yeah. What's up? Just in time. <laughs> Watching us. <laughs> Y'all, our, our good buddy Eric Hodson just showed up. He is a 2017 world champion state cooker. And also a good buddy of ours. He, he called him telling him the crawfish are going down, and he showed up. Sorry, I'm playing with a thing or two there. I'm going to get us a pot to put our pineapple in. Ashley? Yes, sir. It's crawfish time. It is crawfish time. Put them pineapple. We're going to pull there. that camera over a little bit. Look here. Can you see the camera good? I'm fixing to pull it closer. To where y'all. You ever done that? Pineapple chunks. It's new on us too. We had the other day and it was good. Was Come that, try one. That was some of that dusty stuff. Come on. I, I like it better when they get cold. It's different. <laughs> it is, huh? It's not bad. It's spicy. It's spicy. <laughs> this is what this is what crawfish and shrimp bowls are all about. A table full of friends, just eating crawfish and having a good time fellowshipping. That's why you leave them in this can, y'all. Look, because you can just dump some. Man, that pineapple's good. Now, cabbage. I don't know if y'all ever done cabbage. And your shrimp bowl, but it's kind of like if you ever done mushrooms or Brussels sprouts, same kind of deal. Mm. Yeah. That I'm cabbage, gonna, I'm gonna have to do it this. soaks up some goodness. I'm gonna uh, break me off some of this connector. And you going? No, don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> As my friends, you know, my Lebanese friends would say, this is a cabbage roll. <laughs> We're going to hit it with a little seasoning on top of here. This is some daigles, oh crawfish, and shrimp. We're going to hit it with a little bit of that because it's got a little something, something in it. Is, let me try what you just did. You need to. That is fine. Hmm. If you don't like it, I'll give you money back. Hmm. <laughs> He stepped on my foot. I want to try one of these little crawfishes. Man. Isn't that good? That changed the world. That, that connect of black pepper and that cabbage in there. That's good. And look, we got little lobsters. I mean. You break that little dude off and look at all that meat coming right off in that cloth. Oh, these are really good. 
I mean, mm. really good. If y'all hadn't had any crawfish yet this year, they're finally affordable, y'all. And they're good size. They're real good size. I just eating claw meat right now. Y'all come on in here and eat. Yeah, come on. I don't want to look all gluttonous and everything. Yeah, that's right. Y'all go ahead and enjoy. I'm going to see if there's anything on the chat. Candace, you want to try this pineapple? Was that the fresh pineapple? The pineapple has a big, mm -hmm. good flavor. <laughs> Somebody said, the Charlie prices, said I need a GoPro up. on my hat. I tried Man, it out of can. Yeah. It ain't even close. Gross. See what I mean? That pineapple. I got this idea, y'all. I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to take a little bit of this seasoning, a little bit of that crawfish water. I'm going to put them in a container. And I'm going to let them soak overnight. And I'm going to put a little bit of red food color. And I've got some pickled beets in there. And I want to turn them a deep red. And I want it to be like the little Cajun pineapple red hots. It'd be it was just a, just something I've been wanting to do. He talked about that since last time we. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that cabbage. It's point. Here you go. You're gonna need some of that. You're gonna, you're gonna need some of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some of them it's some of them cold beverages in the fridge. Holy schmacaronis, look at that dude. Look at that. Wow. That was a green shot. Yeah, look. I want y'all to be able to see how this goes down. You pull the little flapper up there under your thumb, you catch it on the top over here. And Real nice. And you Real nice. Give it a little twisty twist. And then you got a little bit of meat hanging out right here. And you're gonna catch that with your teeth in between. Mm -hmm. In between your teeth, you're going to catch that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to press real hard at the right at the base of this tail on the, with the thumb on the bottom side and with your forefinger on the other side. As you hold on this, don't pull, it'll break. But press onto this and hold, and it'll just fall into your mouth. Like that. Then you come over here and you break the claw. Right there, right at the joint, the first joint of the claw, and then the flexible one. You want to take the flexible claw, but get up on there. <laughs> take that flexible claw that's moving, and you want to break that dude, and see how it's just coming out? And if you break the flexible one, you can pull out all that meat. Otherwise, the meat's going to stay inside there, and then you got to crack all that. So the meat is going to stay right on that little flexible when you pull it out. Oh. That's how you does claw meat. Water out of that so, flexible. Here's our flexible side. We broke it off right at the first hinge. Take the flexible one, work it, and pull the meat out. Don't like that. Like that. Pow. That's live action. Right that there. is what I'm, hey, you can't buy that kind baby. of knowledge. That's right. Ma'am. I hadn't had crawfish this year. These are so good. Thank you, Zach, for bringing these to us. Mm. It could use, mm. even though it's sprinkled. Yeah. While they're seasoned, all right. They're not over seasoned. They're not over seasoned. They could use a little dusting. Mm. The juice coming out and claw. I know it. I know. Let's hit them with a little more. Now, we didn't throw any corn or potatoes in here. We knew we were going to have some ribs to eat tonight, so we didn't get a whole lot of filler. But, man, mm -mm. this is this is filler enough, isn't it? This is all you need. So, you've seen the proper crawfish peeling, how to get the meat out of the tail, how to get out the claw. We made some crawfish stew the other day. You had some of that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. When you made that loaf? Uh-huh. That was, that was pretty fire. I'm hoping that some of these tails get saved and we kind of do that again. Yes. That would be a good idea. 
but I, you know, I, you know, maybe it's it's not time for soups and stews and all that because I'm gonna tell you, next time it gets cold like that again, I'm just gonna put up my Christmas tree and leave it alone. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm tired of the cold. Put the Christmas lights back in. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to just get them to change color, and it's just going to be different seasons. Oh, then my Easter lights. <laughs> so, crawfish season lights. <laughs> it's crawfish season lights. You can take all these heads, y'all. Don't throw them all away. Uh -uh. But put, put these in a stock pot with some onions and some celery, some garlic. Um, seasoning, that yellow can we talked about. Yeah. Boil them down. Turn it, get them, bring them to a bowl, then turn them back, put the lid on them. And let them just sit there and simmer for, I'm going to say, a good at least 30 minutes, y'all. Well, what you're doing is getting all that goody out of there. When you make a crawfish bisque, they make a stuffing, stuff it in here, saute them, and then they serve these in the stew or in the broth. And that helps create tons and tons of flavor. And you can extract all that. You can use that to make a seafood jambalaya for your rice. You can use it to make soups and stews you can use it to make gumbos um you're pulling all that good flavor out of those heads so while we're gonna throw some away not all of them we're gonna get we're gonna, we gonna keep some man that sausage rolled up in that cabbage might be my favorite thing i love crawfish but man that's good it it is um i mean i might i mean you could just do that without crawfish <laughs> And then wouldn't, we gonna, wouldn't hurt nobody's feelings. Just cabbage and sausage? Yeah. What would you call that? I don't know. Good? In Mississippi, it'd be like a spring roll. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Cajun wrap. Cajun wrap. <laughs> that's pretty darn good there. That's spring right there in Mississippi. That's right. Oh. It don't get no finer. How are we on time, Ashley? I don't know. I'll fix the check. 42 and a half. We're just about to the end of our it's... time with y'all. And then we're just going to get all up on top of here and get up in them. Okay. Get amongst them. Hey, I did say, I did say because in honor of my award-winning hat, I mean my... Uh, Whole winning hat. Hold on just a second. I am giving away a can of spicy white lightning tonight. Because that was the winning hat. Now, I'm going to ask a trivia question. And you might have to go look for this trivia question. But we do have one of the founding members of, of uh, Boar's Night Out and White Lightning here with us. He is also the 2017 SCA World Champion, Eric Hodson. Now here's Boar's Night Out right here, Spicy White Lightning. It's on the shelves right here at Sweet Salon of Mine Distributing. What city does Boar's Night Out originate from? If where you do, can answer that question. Where do they hail from? Where they live? Where they be living? Where they stay? If you can tell me the first person on the chat to tell me where Boar's Night Out is from is going to get sent a bottle of spicy white lightning. While I'm eating crawfish. While you're eating crawfish, I'm going to check out the chat. Cabbage and sausage. Mm. Look, well. Greg Snyder says Olive Branch. He'd Greg be right. Snyder, you are correct. And you get a brand new bottle of spicy white lightning. So send me your address. Damn, and Greg. We'll be glad to send you out a <laughs> bottle of spicy white lightning. Hey, I better ask. Eric, is that correct? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I heard you look. I saw you look over here at Candace and shake your head. I'm like, uh, was I wrong? No, I was shaking my head at Greg. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
So Olive Branch, so Greg, Jim Hudgens was right after him uh, on the chat. So we appreciate all that. But man, in honor of my pole winning hat from White Lightning and Boar's Night Out, I'll be sending that spicy White Lightning out to Greg. Man, it's always a good time. Success. Success. I would say so. Success. Ribs, success. success. Again. What do y'all try these ribs? Two hours and 40 minutes? On the gateway. They were special. Crispy and yummy. I mean, crunchy. Not fall off the bone. Good eating ribs. Real good, good, good eating rib. ribs. All yeah. right, so to recap, we used uh, Texas Chrome, uh, garlic pepper salt, mm -hmm. GPS on the ribs. And then they were fueled by fueled by B and B charcoal, by the way. B and B hickory lump charcoal. Hickory lump charcoal in the Gateway smoker, and then uh, Texas Chrome. That was it. One chunk of applewood. One chunk of applewood. Four slabs of ribs. That color four was slabs. like these four, crawfish, wasn't four, it? Four, four slabs of ribs. <laughs> that other finger didn't four. want to come out. It's a like four, <laughs> four slabs of ribs. Yeah, let, let, let me just say four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Four times. <laughs> that's a that's a little inside outside joke mm -hmm. right there. So four slabs of ribs. Pulled them out. Now we uh, pocket knifed one of those. They went gone real quick. Then the second one. We just doused with a little uh, sauce mm -hmm. or sauce mm -hmm. from uh, Redneck Labs, uh, North Carolina sauce. Yep. And wrapped them back up. Then one slab we sprinkled with Big D's Hurricane River and some North Carolina sauce. And then the other one sprinkled with Sweet Swine of Mine's Apple Chipotle and some uh, North Carolina sauce. Wrapped them back up. Let them, Let them sit rest 30 for about 30 minutes. minutes. Open them up. They was fine eating. Fine eating ribs. At the end of the day, old school ribs, old school crawfish boil. Yep. With friends and family on a nice, cool spring evening here in Bahia, Mississippi. Beautiful night. God bless you, brother. I had a great time. God bless you, brother. Always <laughs> come see us next week, Thursday, 645. We'll be right here at Sweet Swine of Mine Distributing. No telling what we'll be cooking, but we'll let you know. Look at our Instagram. Look at our Facebook. Look at our TikTok. You might never know where we'll announce it. And we'll have another Pick Ashley's Hat. We'll have three other entries. You decide what I'll wear next week. All right. See you, brother. See you, guys. Good night. God bless. Do you end it from there? Or can I? I'll have to end it from here. <laughs>